Okay, in our study of the fool, we can't say we've done every fool in the Bible. My fact is I didn't do folly. When we skip accidentally Proverbs 26, 7. The legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. Now, the Bible has many parables. And a man that is lame walks with a limp. Probably hurts. I got neurosity and it's the killing of the nerves and still it, it hurts. You don't know at what moment that my foot will give out. If it wasn't for my cane, I, I might fall. So we got a man and it's not aiming at the lame man, it's aim at the fool that the walk is not perfect. And when a man is going to be a fool and teach parables, a parable is a story used for illustration for a purpose. Jesus used them often. So when a fool would describe and tell a parable, it would defeat the purpose of that parable. It could do more harm than good. It's not useful as lame legs. You can't ask a man, and I'm not picking on the man that's lame, but you can't ask a, a lame man to run properly. And when you would ask a fool with a parable, he wouldn't be able to do what he's doing properly. So now we move on to Proverbs 27. 17 videos we're at so far. 104 at Proverbs 27, verse 3. And I hope I don't skip any by accident. A stone is heavy. Okay. And the sand weightly. Especially wet sand. But sand in general, it, it's heavy. It's got weight. But a fool's wrath, his anger, is heavier than them both. It's a burden of extra baggage. And we, though it may not be a fool, though the Bible says be angry and sin not, though we have sinned and we have gotten angry and sinning, and there are times in our anger and sin, we have to go eat some crow. I had to just recently. And yet a fool will not repent. A fool will not put away his pride. He'll just keep on getting angrier at many, if not the same subjects, adding more sin, adding more burden, which the Lord Jesus Christ said, cast your burdens upon him, take your anger and the problems and the sin from the anger and cast them upon Jesus Christ. If thou shalt confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, but a fool doesn't believe in God. A fool will not get right with God. So the more people he angers, the more people he hurts, the more damage that has been done. Though in this lifetime, he may not have no regrets, he may not have no sorrow, he may not have no pity, Wait till he appears at either judgment, whether he's lost or he's saved. They say, and we grew up with this, and it's a very stupid saying now. I'm 50 years old. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names never hurt me. Oh, yes, they do. I had a particular event happen to me in grammar school. Out of my control, and... Just something happened, and I got stuck with names for that event. And I still remember those. I can't remember every stick I got hit with. Purposely and accidentally. I've been hit with a baseball bat a couple times. Accidentally, my fault. But names that people have called me, I, I do remember. 
And this fool, we're looking at his wrath and his words and his actions and his judgment has hurt others if it doesn't hurt himself. Proverbs 27, 22. A fool will not control his anger. Though thou shouldest bray a fool in mortar, among wheat with a pestle, or a pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. Now, it's to pound or beat. The mortar and pestle is an old pharmacy way of grinding medicine. And you see a little stone or marble bowl. And then you see this weird kind of tool. It's got a handle, but the end of it, it's got a round. It's rounded. And what the pharmacist would do, he put his leaves in there. He put his seeds in there. But whatever the medication it needs to be in there. And he would grind it. He would ground it. He would powderize it. He would mix it together the old ways. With the leaves, the spices, the medicine. This term here is a medical term of the pharmacist. You know, you can give a fool any medication you want, whether it be turning and twisting and pounding and beating and crushing, or it just comes from a machine. You can do what you can medically for a fool, and yet the foolishness is not going to go away. Matter of fact, there are some medications out there that make you look even foolisher. And make you even do more foolish things. Like the fact is, a foolish thing in this country today, we're going to legalize a, a marijuana. In the hands of fools. I'm not going to get into the med medical marijuana, you know. I don't know nothing about it. I don't have that pain like that. But I'm saying when you give the, the authority of marijuana to a fool, it makes you more foolish. Give alcohol to a fool and he'll only become stupider. There are sometimes I see people, they got bought the, the cans of booze in their shopping carriage or the bottle, and I will say kind of, some kind of stupid remark to them about their stupidity. And we've already done to a lesson where you use the paddle, use the rod, use correction upon a fool. In most cases, what we've done, a hundred and five fools in the Bible. Your average normal fool does not want to come out of his foolishness. He wants to be that jester. And he's going to be judged by God, saved or lost. It's foolish. Remember, he, he ashames his family. He ashames his classroom. He ashames everybody around him. Pity the mother that has a fool for a child. Proverbs 28, 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Just let your heart guide you. That's a foolish statement. Chase your dreams. That's foolish. My heart told me to do. That is absolutely foolish according to the Bible. Even if Christians say, I'm going to let my heart be my guide. You're a fool. You are a Christian fool. You need to repent of your sin. You need to get right with God. You need to get right with the scriptures. You need to study the scriptures to find out if you trust that heart. Where Jeremiah says that heart is deceitful and wicked above all things. Jesus said, out of the heart comes adultery, sin, wickedness, murder, all deceit. I'm going to trust my heart. You're a fool, you're a fool, you're a fool. I should go out. I, I've always thought about going to a business and making stupid signs and foolish signs and handing them out to the people free. Here, wear this for a day. But a foolish person doesn't need a sign because we've seen by the scriptures about 106 times. A fool declares, I'm foolish. 
and America honors them. Sin. Sin. Thinking your heart is uh, is trustworthy is foolish. Let me look at some Bible verses for you. I, I, I want to quote them. I want to quote them. I want to show you from the scriptures. Jeremiah 17, 9. I think we need to look at these scriptures. Jeremiah 17, 9. You want to trust your heart? You want to follow your dreams? You want to go to that magic kingdom? The heart is deceitful above all things, all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, searched the heart. I tried and reigned. Let's try one more. Matthew 15. You want to follow your heart. I just heart you. You just deceive you. You just wicked you. Put heart in your initials and then you break up years down the road or you get a divorce down the road. Deceive. Deceive. Matthew 15, 18. You need a preacher to preach the truth. For those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth with Cometh forth, yeah, cometh forth from the heart and defile the man. Oh, my heart's desire, my heart, you're my heart, oh, my heart, the heart, 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 trace my heart. All right, ready? Don't chase your heart. You ready? For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Let my heart be my guy. My heart light. Evil thoughts. Murders. Adulteries. Fornications. Thefts. False witnesses, blasphemy. These are the things which defile a man. So when you, as a fool, chase your heart, you defile yourself. Fool. Fool. All right. There you go. So get off your heart, get on your knees. Okay, where were we? Proverbs 29.9. Let me do the end of Proverbs. If a wise man, okay, here's the opposite of a fool, contendeth, fight, argue, with a foolish man, that's opposite of wise, a fool is not wise and wise is not fool, though a wise man can act foolish. I've been there by this study. I've taken on the fool, and I'm not bragging. I've confessed. Whether he rage, who? If a wise man. So if the wise man rage or laugh, there is no rest. That, that fool is going to yak, 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 He's not going to get it. You're not going to teach him anything, remember? He's going to be foolish no matter what. There are no results with a foolish man. There are no possible good to the end. The wise and the fool do not mix. Now, I've dealt with them with the public ministry. They'll come up, they'll, they'll, they'll throw things at you, they'll say things, they'll scorn, they'll mock. They don't want the truth. And you just throw in their face, Jesus is the way, the truth. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I know I'm speaking to deaf ears. I know I'm speaking to a fool, but you put into those ears what the... They don't need no nonsense. We talked about those verses before. He answered a fool according to his folly and all that. So, Proverbs 29, 11. <laughs> a fool utters all his mind. But the wise man, but a wise man make, a wise man keepeth it until afterwards. A fool will not think. He talks too much. Too much information. More so if you've been drunken or you're stoned on alcohol or, and drugs. A fool cannot shut up. A fool will get in trouble in marriage. Because there's something you just do not say to your spouse. You just let it go. You don't have to say everything. 
You don't have to defend yourself. You don't always have to get the last word. A fool will walk up to an educated wise man and extreme all his unknownness, all his stupidity, and think that the educated man, the wise man, is the fool, and he is the wise in wisdom. And from the way of that conversation comes to the end, the man that is wise has gained more knowledge because he's dealt with a fool. And the fool has walked away on how great I am in misery. Proverbs 29, 20. See thou a man that is hasty in his words? That just backs up the verse that we just did. Talks too much. All right. There is more hope of a fool than of him. We come to another good fool. Now we said in 29.11 that a fool talks too much. Here is someone who talks too much. They're not a fool. And a fool is given a good standing. So there are people who will not shut up. And yet they're not foolish. And yet a fool is better than they. Let me give you some examples. Gossiping. You won't shut up. If a fool hears the gossip and says, you know, that just, I don't care. Wish I never heard that. And when someone hears the word of a gossip and go, hey, did you hear what I heard? That fool that did not open his mouth, who always opens his mouth, has more credit in the Bible than you in your gossiping. And both fool and gossiping are sins. Kind of interesting. James says we got this thing in our mouth and it's set on the course of fire of hell. You can train a monkey to do things in a circus. You can train an elephant in a circus. You can train a dog with people who are handicapped. But you can't train this tongue. And when the fool has put his tongue to say, you stay behind those lips, those lips are closed, don't you dare say anything to a person who talks too much, we have a good fool. Proverbs 30, 22. Proverbs 30, 22. For a servant when he reigneth. And verse 21, three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which it cannot bear. For a servant when he reigneth. When the man that says, Sir, would you like your newspaper? Shall I get your tuxedo out today? Would you like me to wash the car? You want me to trim the shrubbery? What would you have me to do today, sir? And then the next day, that guy is, all right, I want to set these battle plans. I want to make sure this, this people get taxed. I want to make sure we set this law. This nation now is going to. All right. That's kind of odd in the world. When a servant, a butler, becomes the, the leader. And a fool, when he's filled with me, there is your welfare system against America. America provides food and money and shelter and all the bare necessities. I can't say the word, forgive me. And more like a cell phone and babysitter service. To a man or a woman that does not deserve it, who left school because they dropped out, because they were foolish, because when they were taught, they did not listen. When they were supposed to be listening, they were talking of all the fools that we have come to. A hundred and ten fools. 
and the earth is disquieted when a fool has a refrigerator and probably a freezer and cupboards loaded with food given to him. He did not earn it. He did not work for it. He did not get himself wise for it. And America will find herself guilty. You want a welfare verse? There it is. There are people out there in this country, the only good thing they do is make more children so they can get more of a financial monthly check or debit card or whatever, however they do it today. Listen, you can't tell me. When I grew up as a little boy, my parents owned a, a three-family house. We, we lived in the middle floor of three floors, and we've had those people on welfare. I know in my family, did not have a job, needed a car, went down to, to social services and got money to go get a car. I have to script and save with my savings and, and my checks and stuff like that to make my to make my living. And by the blessing of God, the Father, and Jesus Christ, my house is full of food. And my house has been full of food by the Lord, by Christians who have helped us in times of need, and not the government. Fools look to the government for help. Christians look to God. So, it's not natural. It is not natural for a servant to be reigning. It's not natural for a fool to be, fool, to be filled with food. Proverbs 30, 32. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, pride, Look how great I am. We're number one. I am the greatest Christian. I am number one. I am me, 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 me. If thou hast done foolishly lifting up thyself, or if, if thou hast thought evil, you ever thought evil? Out of the heart comes murders, false witness, adulteries, Fornications, deceit. Wow. I guess I'm foolish. I have done foolishly with a evil thought. Thinking. Whosoever looketh upon a woman the lust after his heart has already committed adultery with her. How many men are guilty of that and don't even realize? I didn't, I didn't go to bed with her. But did you think it? Yeah. I look at pornography. I, I look at videos and stuff like that. You're thinking. You got an evil mind. I am not. I didn't. I do not do that. <laughs> Hope you don't think I'm using it as an illustration. Pornography. Though you are not physically doing anything with that picture. It's an evil thought, and you are charged with adultery with the woman in that picture. You ever have an evil thought? You ever thought about killing somebody? I'm going to kill them. Oh. You ever hate somebody in your heart, the Bible says? Have you ever wanted to do something? You ever thought about, oh, if I could just steal that, if I could just get my hands a hold of that. Oh, my neighbor, look how good my neighbor has it there. That's coveting. That's a sin. You ever covered it in your heart? Ever been watching TV? Oh, I wish I had that hamburger. Oh, that thing looks so good. You just coveted. And Paul says coveting is lust. How you doing? Lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Pride is foolishness. Do not say a word. Do not brag. There are people who are unsaved. You get them the weekend off, and Monday they will boast to their co-workers of all the sinful activity 
of eat, drink, and be merry. They have sinned. They have done foolishly. And when they say, look at how much I partied this weekend. Look how many women I slept with. Look how much money I won. Look at all the foolishness I've done. They are proclaiming pride in their sin. That's foolish. That's foolish. Christians, we can do that. Look how great of a Christian I am. I witness to more people. My ministry is better than that. I am a better Christian than they are. My family is so much better than they. Are you thinking about it? It's a sin. And then you're lifting yourself up above the brethren. You have taken Jesus Christ off the throne, and you set yourself and your family on that throne. Congratulations. You have sinned. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Let's see where we are. We come to the end of uh, Proverbs, and we got a lot of Ecclesiastes. So I think we'll end with Proverbs here. I think we'll stop right here. Good place to stop. Close at the end of Proverbs. And we'll pick up next time, Lord willing, 112 full in the Bible. That last one, 111, you ever exalted yourself? You ever lifted yourself up? You ever lifted up your family? You ever, huh? If thou shalt confess thy sin, if thou shalt confess thy sin, let's go, let's go to that verse. I want you to see it. First John 1, 9. I want you to see this verse. Because I think we all lifted ourselves up. I think we all gave more praise than God. I think we've all had how great I am and not how great thou art. If you didn't, congratulations. You never thought in the grocery store line that you needed to be up there front, not waiting third, fourth, fifth. How dare you get all the red lights? You should get every green. I ought to got that promotion, not her. How dare you speak to me like that? How dare you go? I mean, we can keep going. Somewhere along the line, I believe, and I can be wrong, everyone has exalted themselves in a position that is higher than what they are. Somewhere. Somewhere we have thought that someone has done us harm. Oh, but we do no harm to anybody. In 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say that we have not sinned, I've never boasted of myself, we make him, God, a liar and his words not in us. There is somewhere in our life that we have exalted our great self and not God. We have given the praise to I deserved it or I did not deserve that. We have used the word better for ourselves. And you probably say, Stolly, I wish you'd get off this one and just close this. But have we all been foolishly? Man, I'm the only one that needs to confess his sins. 